Hey guys, we're going to finish up this project. We're going to do number five today. We weren't able to do number five because the bench burned out a motor. That's a long, painful story in itself. Typical Charlie luck. Pull it all apart, find the dead motor, pull it out, say, you know, I could fix this motor with the other old spare I have that had uh, problems. So I Frankenstein it all together, put it in, and I have another motor that goes. So I had to use the spare that I just bought. In any case, it was a freaking mess just getting the bench out and get it all apart and work on it. No wonder it's so heavy. It's three-quarter ply glued to three-quarter ply. That's how thick the plywood is around it. Plus eight motors, plus all the stuff. And of course, I still had a head belt to do it. So, that was fun. As far as number five, it looks real good. Basically, we got the same liquid layout we've had all right a little bit on the chamber very similar to the ls3 liquid a little bit on the right side of the guide it looks pretty good you know we could do that go right down the list of them i think we did that in another video too if i can get it to focus I'll do all the chambers, how close they are. Of course, you guys got to remember I'm spraying that liquid dicum. I'm only human. And we're going to go right down bowl to bowl. All right. Overall, quite happy with them. Uh, ton ton tons of work especially through the intake manifold to make them all work pretty close i do have good news on this project dv calls me up the other day he's like charlie i need all the specs everything on those heads and i'm like okay it's like yeah the uh, the guy would do you're doing that for wants me to design a cam for it i said awesome so I'll probably be doing that right after I post this video. I have to go through and get all my all my stuff to put it in the IOP program anyway. Uh, I did some numbers crunching, and it looks like uh, number two ports were pretty much right in the middle of all the ports. I did a, I did a big spreadsheet on it by hand instead of uh, doing what I was supposed to be doing. And then... Uh, I'm going to use number port number two, I think, to put into the IOP program and uh, get all that figured out and then sh give it all to DV. Okay, we're going to compare five on the left to seven. And the reason I'm not comparing it to six is six was a little bit low. That was when the, the motor started to go. I'm not going to reflow it. I've just, I've had it. So it's going to be what it is. Uh, compare... Six to seven. Yeah, really close. This one tops out a touch better, touch better. Exactly the same. Down up, down one, down one. Tough to beat. Tough to beat. That takes a ton of work to get it even close. Now, what is funny is look how close it is in flows. And yet this has got a different swirl curve than this one. Is it the end of the world? No, it's not, because what really matters is the flow curve after you put the intake manifold on. Now, number seven is going through which manifold? Okay, this sheet really took a beating. Uh, I had to clean a lot of the garage up to uh, get the bench out. It's not fun. So we are comparing seven, which is a lower, which flows 281 to five which finally flowed to 92 after a ton of work all of the manifold uh flows are taken with the 770 carb and the wilson tapered spacer let's see how they do from uh through the manifold now remember that's a short runner that's a long runner okay these are five these are seven how close are we Wow, I got that long runner working pretty darn good. It actually 
Sorry. Five is the long runner. Okay, short runner feeds better, which we kind of figured, right? Okay, how bad is it? Not terrible. It's off by whew, almost 30, 20. All right, 20. Ouch. Still, overall, I'll deal with it. That's the uh, best I could get. Remember, this port actually flows more manifold all by itself. But when you hook that longer port up to the cylinder head, it changes the dynamics enough. It's good, though. It's, it's quite good. Our swirl curve is a little bit different, right? And if we're running a 600 or a 650 cam, our swirl is a touch low. But that runner's coming in, curved runner coming in on an angle is going to be a little bit different. And uh, that was... Five is a top H, so figure that in, too. Okay, top page is seven. We're going to take a look at the air speeds, and then we're going to look at number five air speeds. Okay, pretty darn close on our pinch. Wow. Center of the cell, uh, the, the roof on the those two ports are almost identical. We got a little more speed on number seven, but it also is flowing a touch more. Now remember, that's done with, um, is it flowing a touch more? Let's see. 254, 254, almost identical. Almost identical. Interesting, right guys? It takes so little, literally a couple thousands change of like the short side radius, and you, you can alter your, your speeds like that. Both of these ports, I think, will run great. I'm not really worried about it. Okay, number seven has an exhaust crossover. We're not going to compare that because they're apples to oranges. So we're going to compare number eight to number five as far as the exhaust. Pretty close. This one, this one finishes up a touch better. Can't beat that with a stick, guys. They both got the same tiny bit of noise up at the lower lifts. I'm not really worried about it. That's short side. Air coming around the short side going right up to the roof. That tends to happen in certain uh, chamber designs. So, got a couple of really cool projects coming up. I've got one for DV. I've got one for Andy. Uh, Brian Salter got some of his parts in for his Ford. We've been talking, and uh, you have to check out his channel. He does a great job. Uh, he is definitely a born teacher. There's no question about it. And uh, I agree with... I haven't... He hasn't said one thing that I disagree with, which is extremely rare, because I'm, uh, I'm quite opinionated. DV and I bang heads. It's always a good dis discussion, though. It always is. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Got lots of really cool stuff going on. Um, rumor has the TPI job. Rumor has it he sold that car. I'm not sure what's going to happen with those parts. Um, I also have uh, my Australian customer. He got in touch with me. I can ship his stuff out when I get it all together and clean it up. Box it. And I actually have a Canadian customer that got in touch with me. His stuff has been sitting around for years. Be glad to see that go, to be honest. And uh, that's about it for now. Thanks for hanging out, guys. Have a good night.